Hello everyone, I'm Aurea, and welcome to my first Color Palette Crush episode, where I'm taking a look at artwork from the past and using it to spice up my usual color palette choices. In this session, I'll be referencing an image created by the great Japanese woodblock print artist, Tsukiyoka Yoshitoshi, nearly 150 years ago. I hope you join me as I use a variety of watercolors, oil pastels, and a few other mixed media materials to create mini abstract studies inspired by this historic piece. So let's get started. So I'm absolutely in love with the cooler tones in this color palette. Um, I just, they're, they're place, that's a place that I'm used to being in, in those cool blues. But it was the red that really made me want to try this, uh, just push myself a little bit, get out of my comfort zone, because that's what I need to do is explore a little bit. And sometimes I just need some inspiration from outside to, to push me in a new direction. So I am going to set up some watercolors here and get started. So for the cooler tones, I've chosen Fuchsite Genuine, Salo Turquoise, Cobalt Turquoise, and a Perline Green. And I will put those all down in the description so you can catch those. As for the warmer palette, I've chosen the Quinn Acridone Coral, the Naphthamide Maroon, Perline Violet, and Garnet Lake. And again, those will be in the description. And I always use a few kind of neutral colors, you could say, to make my colors a little less straight out of the tube. So I use Sepia by Winsor & Newton, like religiously. I love it to just kind of soften colors, soften some of the purples, maybe the reds. I also use a Titanium Buff by Daniel Smith and another Titanium Buff by Van Gogh. And I use them pretty regularly to mix with my blues and the other colors to just kind of soften them and give them more of an earthy tone. And I have some Caran d'Ache oil pastels that I'll be using to bring in some of these brighter pops of color. I also have a few drops left of my Echo Line Black, which is the number 700, and I just love it for bringing in warm black tones. I also be playing a little bit with this graphite pencil. It's water soluble and just to, for some mark making, see what happens, throw it in. And that's it. I have my 300 gram watercolor paper, some Sumi brushes that I love to use, just an assortment off to the side here. And I'm just gonna start adding these colors to my palette and creating kind of a, a blue, cooler colored palette and adding those in and then move on to creating a warmer palette. So I feel like starting with a little ink today and I have a few drops of this echo line and I like to just take my time, take a few breaths and just let my brush move on the page and make these first marks with something dark, maybe a little dramatic but it kind of sets the stage for where things will go. And today I just feel like starting dark, so why not? And I don't know, I'm leaning into these warmer colors and adding in a few washes here. I'm not planning on trying to match things entirely, but using this old woodblock print image as a starting point and a reference to trying something new and shaking up my color palette. Now I am starting a little safe here because I do like those darker colors, but that red will be interesting to play with a little bit here later. And so I'll just add in some washes, some blues and play around and be spontaneous. And again, I'm always adding in a little bit of a neutral color here because I just like to make my colors a little more earthy, a little less straight out of the bottle or the tube and soften them a bit with a little of that buff titanium or titanium buff. I always mix it up because the translation is different in Italian and I'm always getting a little confused. Um, I'm adding in some salt to see if this will bloom a little bit. You never know how these inks are gonna behave and adding in some darks and let's see how this goes and take shape.
So I'm going to set down my brushes now and take a look at what's going on. I'm pulling back, but also in to see some of these blooms that are happening with the salt. I really love that look. And it's that echo line that can make this kind of sepia tone. It's supposed to be a black color, but it's very warm. You can even see it in the dish. It's got kind of an amber tone to it. And I really like that. I'm going to pull in some graphite, soluble graphite sticks now and work with these and just kind of treating these all as one big piece and letting my hand just roll over certain areas, adding a little interest where I feel like maybe it's just a little less interesting, but just being intuitive and impulsive, if you will, and seeing how this goes. So I think I'm gonna add in a little bit of this purple that ties in and it kind of resonates with that same kind of dark purple she has in her blouse or her robe. And even this red Caran oil pastel, it's kind of that poppy red that I really just don't have in my palette at all, but it seems to be, it matches quite well. And I really do like it in here with these other colors. Also this turquoise, not exactly from the palette, but inspired by it. And I think it works well, giving some pops and kind of adding some interest in these darker areas, those kind of neutral tones. I like doing that, kind of breaking it up with a little bit of pop. And much like this original print, I mean, there is that pop, there is that that aspect of it that just goes, wow, that red is intense. Um, but also sometimes I go a little too far, I'll add in a little bit of more neutral again. We've got that, that beautiful beige color in her background that's just so warm. And I want to bring a little bit of that lightness in as well. So I have the buff titanium. I'm adding in some little extra, some gestural piece marks here and, and just seeing what that adds to it. Again, it's always this kind of dance for me between light and dark, uh, contrast and highlights and finding that balance. I, I really respond and I love bringing in those two things that kind of conflict between the two. And here I am just bringing in a little bit of white with the oil pastel. Again, adding little, little lines, little gestures to break it up a little bit in areas where I think could be a little bit maybe heavy or dark. So I'm really loving that calligraphy behind her. If you follow me on Instagram or you're seeing any of my work, you know that I'm a big fan of abstract calligraphy. And I often go to my brush here, my go-to calligraphy brush, which is a synthetic uh, squirrel hair brush that I like to use India ink. And I just have a little bit left. I'm not even gonna pour it into anything because I just have a few drops left in there. It's just a black India ink. And I like to take my time and just do a little gestural movements over the page and it has no real meaning to it, but I really like just adding these touches and it feels like it's some kind of strange poetry. I don't know, it, it adds that element to me at least. exciting part where we get to take off the tape. Usually I would probably get out my hair dryer and put some heat on the tape. It really helps to peel it off first, but I'm being pretty impatient. So I'm getting some rips in the paper and that's okay. These are just little studies. They're not meant for anything more than that. So it's just kind of fun to take it off and look at those clean lines. It really does feel good. And I'm really liking it. I'm really liking this top one. I like the little white pastel parts. Um, I am liking that pop of poppy red that's very similar to her robe. And even though it's not an exact match in terms of the color palette, 
I do think it's, you can definitely tell it's inspired by that original with those minty greens, some purple, some of those darker brownish blacks. Again, I really like this this one. This was the one on the top and I'm liking that, those salty blooms that I got in there and the calligraphy, it's pretty delicate. And that one's probably my favorite. That wraps up today's session. I really hope you liked it and enjoyed it. If you did, I hope I get to see you back here soon. I have a few more links here. You could see they will take you to some abstract tutorials I did recently and I'll be posting more shortly. Please click subscribe. I'd love to see you around and I'd love to get to know you. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you soon.